Hello friends, so today we are going to build an image gallery using ReactJS. So basically the concepts we are going to cover in today's tutorial are what are hooks in ReactJS, what is ReactJS mainly used for, how to make an API call using Axios module or using basic fetch API, and how to use Bootstrap for responsive web designing. So to begin with, uh, as uh, you can see in my screen i opened tab for react so giving a basic introduction to react yes it's a library which was built by mainly facebook and then open source on github which is used for making websites which have heavy DOM manipulation now since the latest releases of react uh, there has been switch to using hooks instead of classes and in today's tutorial we are going to use a couple of hooks for our project secondly we are going to use an api open api which is lorem pixel so what lorem pixel does is it gives us a list of images from unsplash which we can use to build a gallery now the prerequisites for this project are that you need to have node.js installed on your system so that you can create your project or install various libraries required for making a basic React project. So if you don't have Node.js installed on your system, go to nodejs.org website and download the supported version for your browser uh, OS. Now coming back to the point of building a React app, what you need to do is go to the terminal and go to a directory where you want to create this app and run command and fix create react app and your project name for our use case it is image gallery so after running this command there will be a new react project which will get bootstrapped into your hard disk and from there you can start building your project. What React React app does is it installs React scripts and other essential npm models like React, React DOM uh, using a basic template which we make use of to build the projects further. The second thing that we are going to need is Axios npm module. So by the time it gets installed, let's just explore what Axios is. So Axios is a NPM module and essentially an NPM module is a collection of JavaScript files which are packaged together for a specific purpose. Now Axios is an NPM module which is used for making API calls to server. In our case, we are going to use this module to make an API call to Lorem Pixum website and get our data. Now if you check out this list API in your browser, you can see that it is returns a JSON object. So what JSON object really is, is it's a collection of items which are packaged together in form of objects containing key value pairs. The key could be anything with a string value and the value can be integers like this or it could be strings or it could be URLs or even arrays. Now, as you can see, this is a JSON array, essentially an array which is a collection of JSONs. We are going to use this JSON array for building our app. If you open this URL in your browser, you can see that there is an image present from Unsplash directory. We are going to make use of such images for building our final app. Now coming back to the terminal, let's hope that, uh, okay, it still hasn't installed yet. So we'll have to wait for a bit for it to download all the required packages for our project second thing that we will need is vs code vs code is an editor which is for mainly developing web, developing websites or backend projects so if you haven't installed vs code in your system go to vs code's official website which is code.vhostutor.com and download the necessary installer file for your relevant os and hardware now once you have Visual Studio installed, what you need to do is 
go to Visual Studio, click on File and open the folder of your project. Now, in my case, it's in Documents. These are all the React JS projects, and we created a photo gallery, image gallery project. So we are going to open that in our VS Code. Now, once you open any VS Code project, you can you will be greeted with an editor like this. I would like to zoom in a bit so that it's visible in a better manner. Now, if you look at the basic structure of your project, you will find an SRC folder within which you have uh, app.js file, app.css file, and index file, index.js file, and a public folder. So the basic directory structure is of a, uh, any website is its cont it contains an index.html file. And here you can find the various HTML tags related to our website. Now, if you look at this website, you will find that its title is Create React App. Now, I would first like to open this app in a browser just to show how it looks. So, go back to your terminal and run cd command along with your project name to get into the folder. Next, as you can see, we have our instruction to run yarn start to start our project. Now, you can go for npm or yarn as a package manager. In my case, I have installed yarn. You can search about yarn online. It's a uh, manager alternative to npm. Now, click type yarn start and wait for some time. And now you have your project running in your browser. So this is the app, which is basic bootstrapped from the index file we just saw. And as you can see, there are some instructions on how to update this app. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to update the app name of the project to image gallery. So coming back to VS Code, we need to open index.html file in the public folder and change the title to image gallery app. Second thing that need to, needs to be done is we are going to use Bootstrap for our project. So we need to visit Bootstrap's official website in order to get some files which are essential for using Bootstrap. So in uh, brief, sure, Bootstrap is a CSS library which helps in making our website responsive and eases the code which needs to be written for CSS. And it greatly simplifies how you are going to use CSS in your project. Now the first thing that you need to do is copy the link href file from here and paste it in your project. Uh, I have in the quick start section. And the uh, second thing that you need to do is copy these JS files mentioned here. So copy these files and paste them uh, just below the comment and about the closing body type. So this essentially covers the steps to import Bootstrap into our project. Now, second thing, as I mentioned, is we need to have Axios module in our project for making an API call. So what we need to do is open your terminal, and you can either kill the process or start another instance of terminal depending on which OS you are using. Go to the project folder where you have created the files in the first place. And then you can use, if you are using yarn, you can run the command yarn add axios. So yarn add is a command which is useful for adding various npm modules to your project. In our case, if you look at Axios setup process, you will see that they have mentioned the command to add Axios to your React.js project here, which is yarn add Axios. I am running the same command here. And essentially, this is going to install Axios module into our project. So what this project did was, it added the Axios npm module in our node modules folder. Now, coming from node modules folder, these are the collection of packages which are pre-installed by Create React app. And we can add our own. 
and these are the various models which are actually essential for running a React app. Now, if you look at the list, it's massive. And yes, a React project does require a lot of such NPM models to run. Now, if you look here, here is the Axios model installed into our project. So that finishes the setup of various NPM models. Now, the next thing that we need to do is understand the structure of our JavaScript code. So basically, uh, React app works in a way that you have a div with ID root in your index.html file. And in the index.js, we have some code which actually populates the div tag with all the essential elements of a React app. As you can see, there is a React DOM node render function which runs our app module in the root element. So that is essentially how a project actually runs in a React app. If you see in the index.html, there is nothing within the root tag. But if you go to the browser, you can find that there are a lot of elements installed here. So here's our app, then header, and then other files. Coming back to the project, we need to edit the app.js file for proceeding with our image gallery. Now the first thing that we need to do is we need to make use of use straight hook. So use straight hook is a React.js hook which is used for initializing state for project. So let's continue after a short break. Okay. Okay, friends. So coming back to the tutorial. Now I don't know about you guys, but I usually like to listen to music while coding. So I'm going to play one of the copyright free music just to get the feel of it. Uh, let's keep the volume low, but I'm still going to run it because programming without music is a sin, essentially. So let's begin. Now the first thing that you need to do is remove all this junk code because we don't need it. Now if you go to your web app, it will be completely blank. Looping a video is a good idea so that I don't play in between. Now first thing that we need to do is make use of this use state hook that's a tongue twister but it's a good tongue twister for creating an array so when we saw this api response here we saw that there is an array filled with json objects so what we essentially need to do is we initialize an empty array then make an api call and then we fill that initialized empty array with all the json objects so that is the flow for getting the data. Now the first thing that we need to do is initialize that array. For that, we make use of use straight hook. Now use straight hook gives back two parameters. The first is the variable. So let's say data and a function to update that data. Let's say update photo gallery array and I guess we can go for photo gallery array as a variable it's long but it is comprehensive or if someone tomorrow comes to this code base at least he will know now if you would like to go for the documentation of your straight hook let me just search it because honestly I have forgotten the syntax. I need to revise it. There is no other reason for going to documentation usually. So yeah, it returns an array with a variable and a function. 
and we define it as a use state and the initial state for the array or whatever variable you define. So in our case, we have defined the variable editor and the function. And then we make use of use state with initial state of empty full and always add a semicolon at the end it's a good practice don't neglect like that now second thing that we need to do is we need to make an api call for that we are going to make use of another hook and that hook name is use effect now what use effect does is it runs before you are rendering during rendering and end of rendering cycle of a reactor rendering is a complex topic i will i might cover it in some other tutorial for now think of it as a pre page load event a page load event and a post page load event in all those stages uh, use state hook is called use effect hooks now here's the use effect of syntax so what essentially we need to do is first we need to input the use effect hook and then we need to make a call of use effect so i will remember the syntax but since i am presenting it to you guys i've almost forgotten all my calling coding knowledge i don't know it might be because i'm presenting while coding while speaking doing a lot of things and my coding based mind might have gone for a toast or the one which recollects so basically this is the syntax for running use effect hook for only once now if you want to run use effect hook multiple times remove this array and it will run multiple times we need to run it only once for making api call so i am defining it on empty array outside next we make an API call. For that, we are going to make a get request. Get request is a basic uh, API level of request which will get us the data. So go to Axios and okay. First, we need to import Axios. So import Axios from Axios. I don't know why, but yeah. And then we have a syntax for our get request. It looks like this. So let's go through it step by step, copy pasting it on our code. Let's try to comment that we are making API call for fetching images. the shortcut for auto ending is control shift i in ubuntu so when pasting any external code it looks like this control shift i vs code magically makes it look better now as you can see we have an axios get call now what this function essentially does is whatever url we specify in this string it will make a call to that string url get the response and make it available in this response variable and this console.log we can get or see the response if there is any error like let's say user goes offline or there is some problem on the server end then the catch function runs and we get an error then is uh, running some code which needs to run even if uh, api fails or succeeds in our case i don't need a then so i am just going to remove it Now coming back to axios.get, we have a URL here which gives us the list of arrays, a list of images in array. We paste that URL here and now we are going to see the response which are getting from this URL call. So essentially go back to your image gallery app, click Control shift i or in more tools 
click on developer tools now the log statement which is present here control log response we essentially print the response from the api request in our browser console this area of browser is called browser console now as you can see we have a lot of stuff here which we are going to ignore and get into data part so we have an array of 29 images great and we want this data so let's sort of log response dot data and this is the array which we need to make use of for our image gallery so as in initially as you remember we had a use state hook which was used to initialize photo gallery array as an empty array so what we are going to do is we need to populate it with the json objects of images which we got from the response dot data so what you need to do is there is a function here which we use for updating that data we call that function and we pass the response dot data into that function and remove the console dot log now if you want to see what essentially happens to the photo gallery app you can log it so the shortcut for log in vs code is type log and hit enter on the log statement then let's say we are printing photo array and let's print photo gallery array variable now if you see initially the photo gallery array was empty after api call it gets populated with the url of images this essentially covers the first part of our tutorial which is making an api call to get images now what we need to do is we need to iterate over this photo gallery array and populate our images so that is what we are going to do next so take the photo gallery array now in order to write variables within the return function we make use of curly brackets and then we need to iterate over this array now in javascript we make use of map function usually well you can go for for loops but map is better i don't know why but yeah map is better okay so mainly map is better because for loop has a lot of boilerplate code and map essentially simplifies the iteration part there might be other reasons but i'm not aware of them honestly now let's see what each item looks like so let's essentially your map contains a callback function which returns the item each item in the array and the index we need both of them first i am just going to print them to show you all what map essentially does in log enter and save now you can see that we have each individual array object printed here now from that i need the url part for showing the images so let's print dot url from the object and we have urls for our images along with indexes then we need to return something from map usually so that it gets rendered in our page in our case i am just going to wrap a div tag outside and within the div tag let's have an img tag now as you know in img we use an src attribute for specifying the url for image so let's get this image always use all that attribute for accessibility reasons it's a good practice so in alt 
we can essentially give a name of the image. Now this part of our developer tools is a network tab from which we can see the API calls made to the server and see the response directly. Now in the preview tab in each individual objective we have a unique ID, author and stuff. I think we can essentially write a string. So for writing a string with variables we usually go for this kind of syntax. Now, using a dollar, we can specify what we need to add there. So in our case, we need to add the ID attribute from there. And then let's say, image underscore and ID that should be good enough next we should specify height else unsplash images are usually very large and we might see just a single image so 100 might be enough I guess then we can close our mg tag remove console.log so i was planning to use this index in key attribute so key is a unique identifier for specifying every unique object which is written within our internet table or within a loop based items in our case we need to specify a key in the parent element which is our div tag so specify a key here and we can go for index. The reason for using index is that it is unique for each uh, image item. And we hit save. And I guess we cannot use these images for some reason. We add this here. Let's see if I let inspect. Yes, we have an SRC with proper unsplash image. Let's open this image in browser to see if the image. Okay. So I guess we need to go for download URL. That's my rough guess. Because this URL actually opened the web page and not the image itself and I think the download URL will be the one which opens the image yes this kind of things happens everyone makes, makes mistakes and I'm doing this for the first time so yeah yes this is the image URL which should open that image hopefully or else this tutorial would be a complete waste of my time let's hope that it works so going back to macbook Air. yeah image gallery using download url instead of url ah finally we have images now as you can see the images are in a scrollable fade and we can now save them so that was my brother in the background he shared him okay now in case of bootstrap we have a layout based system so just to show you what layout is 
essentially what layout system is is let's say i want to specify three images one after the other so what i will do is i will specify a row at the top and then i will specify a column what it essentially does is we have a row element and within that we have three column elements that is how a column of elements are added so let's try this column sm hopefully it works so in react we don't use class we use class names and let's see no it didn't work so let's go for call sm4 this did something but not what I had planned. Call MD4, call 4. At least one of them should work. And I think we should go for a row. done yes we need a row without which column doesn't work okay as you can see the gallery is at least available but there are some images which have not made it into the layer properly so first thing i'm going to do is reduce the height then specify a max width attribute to 300 okay a bit better i guess yeah now bootstrap has its own responsive image attribute which we are going to use shortly but first let's add some padding to it and width can be increased to 400 so for padding there are utilities which are here so i am going to use margin as well as padding both so mar margin is the uh, the attribute which we can specify the attribute between two elements and with padding you can specify the spacing between elements within an element that's the basic kind of way to explain it now for margin we make use of m now i need to specify it for all so m then it needs to be blank for all sides and then the number okay so let's try m1 and p1 yes so we have a padding within each element and around each element okay now we have proper grid with images which are of proper size so this essentially makes us an image gallery the last thing that we can do is add a proper header so that user will know that there is an image gallery i think that was my mom in the background yeah now for header we are going to use Rebuilt component from bootstrap so go to components tab and we have a navbar so navbar is essentially an header like this i like a dark theme navbar 
because it looks good usually something like this so a navbar with a dark theme which we are going to add here now again control shift i to auto indent within the navbar we need to specify the name of the site let's say image gallery okay and that is our image gallery now you can center and align this for that you need to remove this a class with a div with class name i think w100 header with a proper scroll over image gallery so that essentially brings us to the end of this tutorial and i'm done for today i will surely upload this entire code on github as well as code sandbox now this is a part of my upcoming lecture series which i will tell you all about in next videos thank you for listening to today let's stop this music goodbye sayonara happy weekend or whichever day you saw this video bye bye